And now it's time for the most exciting part of the evening. To start, I would like to introduce the chair of this 42 mentorship program, Mona Kuhl. Please welcome Mona Kuhl. Somewhere else. So 
the Lyrics Movement. Sometimes some people are not quite ready to step into the arena. They think they are, but they're not. They back away, but they may come back. But that retention is huge. And that's why mentoring is making a difference. I have mentors over here, those three that I mentioned. They've kept me going. And you know, when I was district governor, that group were ready to get for me whenever I needed support or guidance or a kick in the butt. <laughs> so it was good. Now there's other stories. So that's the three, two, one. Everybody benefits. I believe this group over here has stories. Any stories over there? Any of you? Oh. When I first joined Toastmasters, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't know anything about mentor. I went to my club for about a year, and I never even heard the word mentor. And then I stepped up outside of my club, and I went to St. Sayers at the time. And there was this amazing evaluator. Now, some of you might know her because she's dressed in a chicken before. Some of you might know her because she's standing right there with a coolie. And she gave the most passionate, heartfelt, articulate evaluation I've ever seen. And I thought to myself, wow, if I could learn to evaluate, like that, and Mona became my first mentor. And having a mentor has changed what I feel I can do, give me confidence. She went on to win the district evaluation, so that tells you where that goes. <laughs> Very good, Mandy. <laughs> so, uh, now, you have a story, darling, or I just have a good story. <laughs> Toastmasters, and for three months she came to the door and then walked away. Three months she would come every week, walk up to that door and walk away because she was too afraid to join Toastmasters. And then one day she had the courage to walk in the door. And her very first meeting here as a guest, there was a person that came and sat beside her. They are meeting mentor at our club. And that person made her feel welcome. And she is now doing that. She did a test speech at evaluation. She is now a full-fledged member of Toastmasters. And when I see something like that, I know the mentoring program really works. All right. Marvin, do you have a story? Sure. I have a <laughs> short story. Uh, just recently, I met a person at our club, a brand new member at our club. And as he joined our club, I noticed he was really gung ho and, and really eager to learn and really to ask a lot of questions. And I thought, that was me 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> so maybe I could be his mentor. So I offered to be his mentor and I, I jumped in and volunteered as mentor. And it's going well. He, he asked all these questions and I can help him through, it, through the program and through the, through the club. And he's always traveling all the city going to a lot of clubs. So I talk to the fellow with them, sometimes I give him suggestions and he goes there, they all reports back to me. So there's a lot of fun to get to see somebody who's similar in your, in your skills. Many of you have stories, and those are what are important. That's why we want to share those stories. Now we're going to get really excited. This is the part where we want to get interactive and it's all about you. The input. So guess who's going to leave that? Darlene and Matthew. For this section, Mandy is going to speak first, I'm going to be Bella. <laughs> and then afterwards, I'm going to speak and she's going to be Bella. <laughs>
So let's go. Let's dream really, really big. So what I want for you to think is, if you could have the ideal mentoring club, the ideal mentoring program in your club, what would it look like? You know what you're all thinking? So Darlene, if you could put one thing in your ideal mentoring club, what's one thing that you would put up on the list there? Fun. Fun!
speaking has how many members? 34. 34, and about seven of them are experienced Toastmasters. And the rest are almost all members for less than a year and a half. And so the reality check for me is lots of new members, not enough experienced members. Do you, have you encountered some things when you're trying to set up a mentoring program or when you begin to think about it and the first thing that comes into your mind is, oh, but, what's your but? What are the things that come into your mind that would be challenges? Older members, are the older members need mentors too? Older members need mentors too. Seasoned members need mentors. Too. Mentors too. Mentors. Seasoned members need mentors. <laughs> So, lack of clear expectations. 
And you know, all he did, it wasn't formally said at that time. All he did was he sat down and showed me the program. He showed me the communication track and he showed me the leadership track. And then he explained a little bit about each and he showed me in the book of what, where that was and how that looked. And you know, just that little explanation I saw was more than speaking. There was leadership in here. Now, I didn't know that leadership was one area that I would gravitate to. But thanks to him giving me that guidance, and he was the one that if I was struggling, I would call up and have that conversation. That meant a lot to me in the very beginning. So right from day one, I had somebody guiding me all along. And that's been my foundation. That's why I was very passionate about mentoring. So find that champion. And if you're the champion, your passion and your enthusiasm will spill over. And you may get one or two or three in your club to support you. It was like the same idea with the mentoring program for the district. Hey, you didn't have the idea, but you need a team of people to support you. And guess what? You've got a team of people. So you can do the same thing. So if you're the champion, find another person to come along with you. So that's one. So the other one is Margaret is going to talk about it, and it's the core team and the roles and the types of mentors. Margaret. Thank, thank you, Mona. How many of you are vice president of education? Anybody here vice president of education in the club? Or a few of you? According to Postmasters International, the vice president of education is responsible for the mentoring program in your club. But that, what that means is, so, so they're responsible. But the vice president of education, can, what we need for a mentoring club is a leader, what we call a mentoring coordinator. coordinator. Now, a vice president of education can either decide to be a mentoring coordinator or find someone else, find a champion that you want to suggest it. So delegate the role to somebody in your club to be a mentoring coordinator. Once that mentoring coordinator is picked or delegated or volunteered in the club, that, <laughs> that person, person would lead the mentoring team. Now, the mentoring coordinator's job is to, is to first find a team helpers and people to work with, and then organize a program where they can assign mentors to, to all, the pe all the members of the club, to mentor people who are, who are mentees, people who need mentors. And that's the mentor's coordinator's job, it is to find mentors for the mentees. Then the mentoring coordinator has to work with the VPN, because the VPN knows what their goals are for the, for the club, for the members, and works in VPN membership, because the membership person knows the new members and who's joining the club. So the three of them work together, the coordinator, the vice president of education, the vice president of membership work together to, to get the people there and find the mentors to fit the mentees. And that's the, the core team. On top of that, what we have is three types of mentoring. The first type is the mini mentor. The mean mentor is a person who is in the, at a meeting who can sit with a new member or a guest and go over certain goals in the, in the meeting that come, come about. So if a, if a new member comes in and joins the club and asks me a timer or what's the what time is all about, the, the mean mentor can sit next to the new member and mentor the new member how to be a timer for the first time for that meeting or how to be how to be our counter or a familiar. And that's what a mean mentor role is, taking on a small role or any role in the club at, in this, at a time for new, for new people. What we have next is we call a specialty mentor. A specialty mentor is a mentor who works on a special situation, a special idea or a special skill. There are special skills in Toastmaster like evaluation, humor, um, speaking on your feet, tip topics, and store, or even be a Toastmaster. And that special mentor can, can focus on that skill, and anybody in that club can ask that mentor, what do you do when for evaluation? How do you add to your speech? Or how do you be a Toastmaster? 
and that's the job of the mentor. Our third type of mentor is called age mentor, and that's the mentor most of you know about are working one-on-one. -on -one. Now, a foundation mentor is usually picked by a mentoring coordinator to work with a mentee, and that foundation mentor signs a, what's that, a contract, per se, and work with the mentee for a certain amount of time, and focus on that mentee's goals and, and achievements, and what, where the person wants to go, and work with that mentee, mentee to support the mentee and take him to the next step. And, and we'll either be the speeches, with the roles in the club, with the goals, the education program, and so on, is more a one-on-one -on -one situation. We work one-on-one in the club and one-on-one outside the club before the meetings too. So you always occur. And those are the three types of men men mentors. There's also things that come about, and they're always they all fall in those three categories.
and start one step at a time. So those are some of the ideas. So now we're going to turn it back over to the two bands. Guardian and then.
called Flowering and Cap. And in terms of the problems or the challenges, one was, of course, not knowing what the benefits of Medicare is. Um, one was lack of support from the executive, and then one was having too many new members all at once. And in terms of solutions, obviously, they don't know the benefits. Well, if you start training them on what the benefits are, it takes care of that pretty quickly. So an education session on the benefits of mentorship, and even doing that a couple of times a year would, would be helpful. So maybe in September, and then again in January or February, uh, as new members come on board, so they don't have to wait till the whole year to find out. Uh, in terms of lack of support from the executive, that actually came from me, and it was that our club wasn't meeting, the executive wasn't meeting, and without those meetings, I felt unsupported and on my own to try to solve the problem and didn't have the resources. So I, that's comes back to having the executive meetings are really, I think, critical to the success of the club in many ways we don't realize. And then too many new members uh, having one mentee take on, of course, or one mentor take on more than one mentee, uh, and even going so far as to have group meetings. So if you've got two or three meeting with them simultaneously, and then they get to share ideas as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. I'm over here, group number five. So the account is just uh, the first. Oh, my name is Chris Altan. I'm with Tricanto Services. Well, the challenge that we identified was the lack of commitment. And the challenge that we had with the lack of commitment would be the, the lack of activity level, that is, the lack of commitment from the mentor and the mentee. For instance, there may, if there may be a situation where the mentee they may be motivated at first, but then they decide that they don't want to proceed with the program, and they lose that, that account of the uh, commitment. And also, from the mentor as well, and having to buy into the program, buy into the process. A lot of what we talked about is buying into the process and having accountability for both the mentee and the mentor, because it's a two-way street. One way, a couple of ways that we thought we could overcome this this challenge would be to ask a Toastmaster from another club to have a workshop about mentoring and how it is a two-way street and what you can get out of Toastmasters. I think for myself, when I first joined Toastmasters, I wasn't sure what I could really get out of it. And when you're someone that's new to a club, you may not necessarily appreciate what you can get out of it. And sometimes you can be to hear a different voice to, to articulate what you can get out of it. Uh, another point that we, that we came up with is to break mentorship into chunks. So for instance, you can have a mentor for the icebreaker, you can have a mentor for the speech two, you can have a mentor for table topics. And finally, have different, have similar experience levels for the new method, for the new Member. So, if someone's doing is a new, me a new member, have someone that has five speeches to, to mentor them rather than having someone that has an ETM. Thank you. Thank you.
who has become more experienced now, but not feeling confident to be a mentor. However, the seasoned mentor is now mentoring the mentee on how to be a mentor. So it's been a neat, uh, neat really to join. The, the, the nice thing is to see how the relationships between members in the club develop. Great, thank you. Does that feel good for you? Does that feel energized? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Excellent. So now we're going to turn back over to Dongyi and Nadine to talk about the best mentor program. All great ideas, Chris, I'm going to take home for our club. So it'll be fun. I really like some of them. We want to talk a little bit about how to build the best mentoring relationships. Now we've gone from the big club mentoring program to one on one. On the website, you'll see these four modules. The module we're speaking to right now is module four, and it's called How to Build the Best Mentoring Relationships. And there's a lot more detail in there. So if you find that interesting to you, you can go and look on that online and you can get more information. BEST is an acronym for Build, Establish, Support, and Transform. In the building part of the relationship, so that's when you just, you just been matched, you agree, I think, oh, my Castilla, you're just my mentor, this is great. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and so the very first meeting is critical because you have to sit down and establish the ground rules, build some trust. So the ground rules between Castilia and I are going to be that I am going to drive the bus because I'm the mentee, and she's going to encourage and support me. Now she got like 400 awards last year, and that's not my style. So you're going to have to calm yourself down if you're going to be with me. <laughs> but we need to be really clear because Castilia is going to want to know what do I expect out of the relationship. And so we'll have a conversation. She'll share some of her experiences with me. I'll share some of mine. I bring something to the table too, even though I'm a new member. I was a writer before I became a little talk now. So I only had writing skills, just didn't have speaking skills. So you'll develop the relationship, you'll build rapport and trust, and share some of your dreams, and still you what you want to do. Oh, that's just really good because that kind of connects with what I want to do, but just not as fast. <laughs> <laughs> on page four, you'll see on your handout, you'll see this a little summary. Feel free to write whatever you want to do. But on page five is the partnership contract and some suggestions for what you can do in your very first meeting. So the very first meeting, part A, you introduce yourself, provide a little background information, talk about how long you've been in Toastmasters, and why did you join and what you hope to accomplish. And then narrow it down. So the big goal is I'm going to be a, a paid speaker someday. Well, what do I do, need to do right now since I'm a brand new member and never ever given a speech? So then Castilian and I will break down. Okay, over the next six months, because we've decided six months is our contract. Over the next six months, maybe I should try and do, because still you want me to do 12 speeches, <laughs> but I'm going to do three. <laughs> and that's okay, because still is okay with that. She's going to allow me to drive the bus. In, so we'll just describe that in our first meeting. So we get a common sense of what the ground rules are for how we will meet with each other, how often we'll meet, whether we'll phone. Maybe she doesn't like to stop on the phone, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll just communicate by email and meet once a month. Whatever it is that's working for us, we'll decide that. And we'll write it down on this contract so that we're very clear about how that works. And then we'll say the partnership started today and it ends, it ends in three months, it ends in six months, it ends in a year, whatever two of you decide. Now why is this contract so important? The contract's important because I've had people tell me 
that I was their mentor seven years later. I've been in three different clubs since then. I didn't even realize they thought I was their mentor. I haven't even spoken to them in five years. <laughs> and that's not good. <laughs>
get together with your mentee, find out, plan evaluation, what's working well, what do I need to improve, talk about it, and go forward. Now, challenges in a relationship. Anybody meet any difficult people in their lives? <laughs> Anybody maybe work with them tomorrow at work? <laughs> Corrective action, okay? This is what I want to suggest. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right in the manual, in that module, is a way that you can problem solve step by step. If there's a challenge in the relationship, um, what are, are there any challenges in the mentoring relationships? No, I never. Yes, there are, there is. Absolutely, there are challenges. Sometimes things don't work out. We all know that. But here are the tips. Problem solve, follow the template, brainstorm together, see what are the steps you want to move forward. This is a relationship like any other relationship. And finally, transform. Two things I'm going to offer you about transforming. Ending the mentoring relationship. Set a clear time. And what I mean by that is so that you're not hanging on for seven years thinking you're somebody's <laughs> mentor. Be really clear. And you can renegotiate it, go back with the same mentor. And the partnership, keep in touch for a specialty mentor, or look for a new mentor. And finally, this is what I want to emphasize. Celebrate the successes between the mentor and a mentee. All my mentors know I love chocolate, <laughs> celebrate with chocolate. Okay. Go have a coffee, go have a meal, go have a beer. Whatever works for you, but celebrate. And finally, it was brought up in the discussion here. Here's a tip, go back to your executive, put it down on your action sheet and piece of paper. Recognize your mentors and your mentees in your club. That way people can see the value and the benefits, and you can build the best relationship. So tonight we've Concluded. Building the best relationship. What's the B for? Yeah. Oh, that was just so weak. We're just going to try it again. It's going to go out and interject with us. What's the B for? Yeah. What's the E for? Yeah. What's the S for? Support. And it's going to be really loud. The T is for? Transforming. That's how you build the best mentoring relationship.
Just remember, everybody's got great ideas or input and so forth, so that team can work to your advantage. And lots of times, as a, as a mentor, if you're doing a group, they'll help each other, even if you're not there. They've got a team together that they can go to. So and you can take that. Module three, how to train the mentors and the mentees, just in case you want to look. Do you have a mental training in the original? Yeah. Yeah, we've done what we've done is 15 minute training and just being very specific. And and we hit we have an agenda and we hit specific points. And so that's 15 minutes, or you can maybe go 20 if you can. I know that some clubs don't have that time frame. But you know, do a small section and just do, and, and even if it's just tips, you know, you could have lots of tips that you, you know, Nadine was giving a whole bunch of tips, and Darling and Darling and Marvin. So use those tips and, and maybe expand on the tip or do something like that. Be creative. You're all great creative individuals. So yes, you can. And one tip I want to offer, put the tips on your agenda. So there are new yes. better clubs, they don't have a lot of time. Start running for four or six weeks. Make sure you have two or three tips on your agenda and run it every week. And it's another way to educate the members. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. You should do that. <laughs> <laughs> just a short question. As Sandy mentioned, I'm goal-oriented. And I just want to you to clarify what's in for the mentor in the Postmaster program. What kind of awards they can achieve? No, Maybe no, some no. people don't know. Yeah. 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 There is one part where you are a mentor and, and mentoring an individual for three speeches. So that is <coughs> one right there. Are that there an advanced speed? Yeah. No. Part of your CL is also part of your advanced yes. goal. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. The last one. Everyone always gets the other candidate. The mentor is always the last one. Are there certificates that you can give out to mentors and mentor kids?